Next, we will see the next concentration term, which is called normality, which is denoted by capital N. So, what is normality? It is the number of equivalent moles of the solute per liter of solution, just like molarity, okay. This is also per liter of solution, but here we are going to take the equivalent moles of the solute, okay. So, now N, the normality is given by the equivalent moles of solute per liter of the solution. So, what is this equivalent moles? It is the weight of the solute by the equivalent mass divided by the given volume in 1 liter of the solution. So, now what is, let us go into what is equivalent moles. Equivalent moles is nothing but the given mass of the solute by the equivalent mass. Again, what is equivalent mass? Equivalent mass is nothing but the molar mass of the solute divided by the N factor. Now, I will tell you what is this N factor. Let us calculate for sulfuric acid as an example. H2SO4. So, for an acid, the N factor is number of replaceable hydrogen atoms, okay. So, here in sulfuric acid, the number of replaceable hydrogen atom is 2, okay. So, now what do we do? The molar mass. So, what is this equivalent mass? Molar mass by the N factor. The molar mass of sulfuric acid is 98. Okay, divided by 2, so which is equal to 49. So, the equivalent mass of sulfuric acid is 49. Now, let us substitute this and do a numerical. Find the normality of 0.98 gram of sulfuric acid in 500 ml of the solution. So, the given volume is 500 ml. Okay, so, now what is the formula? Normality is the weight of the solute which is sulfuric acid. So, what is W2 here? The given mass is 0 0.98 grams. So, 0 0.98 grams divided by the equivalent mass. So, we calculated the equivalent mass of sulfuric acid as 49. So, divided by 49 into 1000 divided by what is the given volume of the solution? It is 500 ml. So, this would come up to 0.04 n. Okay, so, this is how we calculate the normality of a given solution. So, next we will also see how do we calculate the n factor for acids or bases or ions and atoms and so on. Now, we will see how do we calculate the n factor for different compounds. Okay, first let us take acids. So, the n factor for acids is number of replaceable hydrogen ions in the acid. So, when we take hydrogen chloride HCl as an example, the number of hydrogen which can be replaced is 1. So, the n factor here would be 1. Okay, now let us take oxy acids. In case of oxy acids, we cannot directly come to a conclusion that number of hydrogen replaced. We cannot write the n factor like that. So, let us take hydrogen sulfate that is sulfuric acid. So, the structure of sulfuric acid is this. So, now here the number of hydrogen replaced is 2, 1 and 2. So, in case of oxy acids, so the hydrogen should be attached to the oxygen. Only that hydrogen we will consider for the n factor, okay. So, now here from the uh, like you know structure we can see that the hydrogen which is attached to oxygen, there are two hydrogens attached to the oxygen. So, the n factor would be 2. So, now in case of Phosphoric acid H3PO4, the structure is like this. So, the hydrogen which is attached to oxygen are 3, 1, 2 and 3. So, the N factor here would be 3. So, as I told you, we cannot just see the number of hydrogen here and write the N factor. So, the hydrogen should be attached to the oxygen atom. So, let us see H3PO2, the structure here would be P double bond O H. OH and H. Okay. So, as I told you that here the hydrogen which is attached to oxygen is only 1. So, the N factor for H3PO2 would be equal to 1. Okay. So, now let us go on to move on to the basis. How do we calculate the N factor for basis? 
Okay. So, here it is the number of OH ions displaced would be considered as the N factor. So, when we take sodium hydroxide, the OH group is 1, so N factor would be 1. So, let us take calcium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide. Okay. Here, the number of replaceable OH minus ions are 2, so the N factor would be equal to 2. So, let us take aluminum hydroxide, Al. OH thrice. So, here the N factor would be 3. Okay, these are for bases. Next, let us see how do we calculate the N factor for atoms. So, the for atoms we see the valency. So, the valency would be equal to the N factor. So, let us take sodium atom. The valency of sodium is plus 1. So, the N factor here would be equal to 1. Similarly, calcium, the valency is plus 2, so the N factor would be equal to 2. So, here in case of oxygen, the valency is minus 2, so therefore the N factor would be equal to 2 and for nitrogen, which is minus 3, the N factor would be equal to 3. So, in case of atoms, we take the valency into consideration for calculating the N factor. Coming to ions, okay. So, for ions, it is the charge present on the ions, okay. So, whatever charge is present on the ions, that is equal to the N factor. So, let us take Fe2 plus. So, the N factor here would be equal to 2. Let us take Fe3 plus. So, the N factor here would be 3. And with chlorine, the N factor here, the charge is minus 1. So, the N factor here would be equal to 1. For sulphate, the charge on the sulphate is minus 2. So, therefore, the N factor would be equal to 2. Similarly, for nitrate, NO3 minus 1, the N factor would be equal to 1. Okay. So, now coming to the last part for calculation of the N factor. Suppose we want to calculate the N factor for a given reaction, the element in the reaction. So, let us take this reaction, zinc plus copper sulphate giving you zinc sulphate plus copper. So, what is the oxidation state here? For zinc, it is 0 here and in the product part, it is my plus 2. So, the number of electrons transferred is 2. So, that we will take as the N factor for zinc, it is 2 now. Now, let us see for copper sulphate. So, here it is plus 2, which is going to the 0 state. So, again the number of electrons transferred are 2. So, the N factor for copper would be equal to 2. Now, let us see how do we calculate the normality of mixtures. It is same as the molarity, how we calculated the molarity of a mixture. Here, the same thing, the normality would be N1 V1 plus N2 V2 divided by V1 plus V2. So, please remember that this formula is used when the mixture is either acid, okay, when both the mixture are acids, that is the same acid or if it is the same base. Only for these mixtures, this formula can be used. Okay? So, now let us calculate for a given mixture. How do we calculate the normality? So, here we can have taken 200 ml of 0.2 N solution. Okay? So, here the normality and volume. So, let us take V1 would be equal to 200 and the normality N1 would be equal to 0 0.2. Okay. And here in this, the volume V2 would be equal to 300 and the normality is N2 is equal to 0 0.3. Okay. So, we will apply this formula because the acid is the same acid here. Okay. So, here the normality would be equal to 200 divided into 0 0.2 plus 300 into 0 0.3 divided by V1 plus V2. So, it is 200 plus 300. Okay. So, here the value would be 40 plus 90 divided by 500. So, the normality of the mixture will be 0 0.26 N. So, please note here the acid is the same here. Only then we can use this formula. Okay, now, how do we calculate the normality of a mixture when one is an acid and other one is a base? Okay, so now let us calculate 
NaVa for an acid. So here the normality is 0.2N and the volume would be 100. So this is equal to 20. Okay. Now for the base, let us calculate NBVB. So this will be 0 0.3 into 200. So this would be equal to 60. So what we have to see here is, we have to see which is greater, whether NAVA or NBVB is greater. So in this case, NBVB is greater. So what do we do? We take that, this side, okay, the one which is greater. So NBVB minus NAVA divided by the total volume of the solution. In case, if the acid was greater, then we would take NAVA minus NBVB. So in this case, NBVB is greater. So we are taking here. So this would be equal to 60 minus 20 divided by the total volume of the solution, 100 plus 200, which is 300. So the normality of this mixture would be equal to 0.133N.